We have been matched. Well, in the adoption world, being matched, especially if you have not hosted, is a really big deal. Um, being matched means that the preferences form that you filled out with what kind of child you're looking for, the special needs that you're willing to accept, all those things, they have found a child that matches those. Now, some families will wait months, even years to be matched with a child, especially if they're trying to adopt a baby. Um, if, however, if you have hosted, then... The chances are pretty high, like 99% chance, that you will be matched with the child that you hosted. There's no 100% guarantee though because there are some different factors that could happen that could cause you not to be matched with the child you hosted. For example, if a child is older in Colombia, it's not the same way in every country, but in Colombia, the children age out of the system when they turn 16 which means they're not eligible for adoption anymore. So if a child is getting older and is about to age out of the system, then, um, and the family that hosted them and is working on their adoption is taking a long time, then that child, if another family is available who would like to adopt that child and can do it much quicker, that child might be given to another family. So that they don't age out of the system and miss out on their chance to be adopted. Um, <clears throat> sorry, another reason why a child might not be matched with their host family is if that child chooses not to be adopted anymore. Maybe um, either they just choose not to be adopted or they decide that they don't want to be adopted with that host family after all. And that kind of thing can happen. Um, there was a chance of that happening with our daughter Stephanie as well. She was very much teetering and on the edge of whether she wanted to be adopted or not. And so we're very glad <laughs> that she did decide to be adopted, and she is too. But, you know, sometimes the being faced with the unknown, you know, are, is this going to be a good family? Am I actually really going to fit in with them and love them? Are they going to love me? Are they going to be good to me? I'm going to a different country, different culture, different language. Sometimes it can be overwhelming and too much, and they decide, I can't do it. I'd rather just stay here, take my chances here. So, but at any rate, yes, we have been matched with um, Jose. And so now that doesn't mean that it's still like 100% guaranteed that uh, the adoption goes through. Um, it's never 100% guaranteed until you're literally there in Colombia, in La Mesa, at the courthouse signing the adoption papers. <laughs> so you could be there in the country for several weeks or months, depending on which country you're in and what the requirements are, and, um, and still go home empty-handed because of circumstances. Okay, so what's going to happen next then? So now we have another probably anywhere a week and a half, two weeks or so until we get our official referral. So the referral is all of Jose's paperwork, has all of his information and everything. That needs to be translated into English and then that referral gets sent to us. That's the big thing for us is getting the referral. That's the big deal. Once we get the referral, then we will um, be able to go through it, say, um, you know, now it's our turn to say, yes, we're totally in, we're going to go through with the adoption, or maybe we have questions we need to ask, and it's our time to ask questions. Or maybe it happens that we decide, nope, we've decided that we can't do it after all. I can't imagine that that's what we would decide. <laughs> we're pretty committed, but... But, you know, uh, that's what could happen with families, potentially. So once we go through all that paperwork, we um, say that, yes, we're continuing with the adoption. That gets sent back to Colombia. 
And then what we will do is fill out our I-800, which is now us petitioning the U.S. government for approval to adopt Juan. So it's kind of this, this back and forth because you're adopting in two different countries. You have to first get permission to adopt at all in the United States. Then you get permission to adopt at all in Colombia. Then Colombia gives you their approval to adopt a certain child. Then you get approval from the United States to adopt a certain child. So it is, it is double time, <laughs> double time work. So, um, so that's where we are. I wanted to, at this time, take a little minute to talk about something that I think everyone who's going through an adoption will definitely deal with. And it is just feeling like stress <laughs> all over you. <laughs> Lots of stress. You'll start to feel, you know, you get like all the, the muscle aches and the cramps. And um, sometimes you'll have a hard time sleeping, whether it's because you're just overwhelmed with things or you're worried about things. Maybe you're having dreams about the child. Maybe you're having dreams about things going wrong. Or maybe just because of all the stress, you're just, you know, having crazy weird dreams about whatever. Um, and then, you know, you're worried about, like, money. Are we going to have money for everything? Is the timing going to work out? Are they going to say yes? Is the child going to say yes? So just all of these different things. And even if you're moving forward in faith and confidence that things are going to work out, it can still start to get to you after a while. So... Take some time to take care of yourself. And I want to tell you that just as much as it is important to pay your rent, um, pay for food, pay for gas for your car, whatever bills that you have that are necessities, you need to include in there as one of those necessities taking care of yourself. Now, sometimes taking care of yourself can be free. It depends on what you feel that you need to be able to take care of yourself. Maybe it means um, just doing some yoga, relaxing, meditative breathing at home, taking um, warm baths, going out for a walk or a run, um, you know, a game night with friends, whatever it is, you know, sometimes those things can be free. However, sometimes you realize, oh, this isn't, these things aren't working for me. I need something a little more. Maybe you need to go get a massage once a month or every two weeks. That's going to be part of your budget. Um, you know, maybe you need to get away from the weekend, go out to the beach. You know, that'll cost a little bit in travel time if you don't live super close. Whatever it is, put those things into your schedule, into your time, and into your budget. And don't feel guilty about, you know, oh my gosh, that's just going to cost extra money. That's going to take away from our adoption. Because if you are so stressed and overwhelmed, then you're not going to be able to think properly and handle properly the things of life and the things of the adoption. You're not going to be as available for your family and for your children and for just other things that come up in life, you, you just won't be there for them. You're not going to be as available to handle the additional things that are coming with the adoption. And um, I have found, you know, there are lots of opportunities that just kind of will come your way, whether it's making extra money, helping people out, people helping you out. And if you're so stressed and overburdened, you're going to miss those you're not going to be able to handle, you know, anything extra. So feel free, put a little bit of time, a little bit of money into self-care. Self-care for you and self-care for your family. And when you do that, then you will be open and you will be available for the people that need you, the things and time that need your attention, and open for other opportunities that come your way. So that's just my little tip, <laughs> something that sometimes I have to remind myself of and take a little step back, like, okay, 
okay, Marlene, what, what do you need to do? What do you need to do to take care of yourself so that you can, you can be um, the, the best you can be and the most efficient you can be? So thank you for joining me today on our journey, on our journey, I don't say journey, on our adventure as we create our adoptive family. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit of a stress getting to me. I can't remember what I always say. But anyways, um, thanks again for being here. I hope these things are helpful. Please like, subscribe, comment, send me like questions. I'll be um, happy to answer questions in the comments about things. If you're um, thinking about adopting or have questions about anything, please be free feel free to do that. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.